Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is Everyone's Game and I am Anna Lissa. July is going to be a big month for women's football. There's at least four major international tournaments that will be played between July 2nd and July 31st. There's the Women's Euro competition as well as Women's Afghan, CONCACAF Women's Championship and the Copa America Women's Tournament. I believe the winners of the Euro and the winners of the Copa America will play each other for the first ever women's finalisma. So again, there's just women's football is going to be placed on the international stage during July and you may not be able to watch all of the games or at least one game from each tournament, but you can pick a player, you can pick a team, you can pick a tournament and just support these women who have been working extremely hard ensuring that they're fit and they're ready to play the game that they love to play and to just leave it all on the pitch. We're going to be covering the Women's Euro as well as the CONCACAF Women's Championship. There's a lot of content on its way so subscribe to the channel, like the videos, share it to someone. This is our first video in the Women's Euro series. This is our build up to the Women's Euro that will be kicking off on July 6th. This is the 13th edition of the Women's Euro Tournament. It will be held in England and the games will be played in various cities across England. Between July 6th and July 31st and the final will be held in what is known as the home of football in England, Wembley Stadium. There's a total of 16 teams and the teams have been separated into four groups, Group A, B, C and D. We'll have a look at the teams and the groupings a bit later, but this year, the prize fund for the prize pool for the tournament has been doubled from that of the 2017 prize pool. So now the teams will be going after a prize fund of 16 million euros. This is a record breaking prize fund for the women's euro tournament. Each team will not only be going after 660,000 euros that is guaranteed to the winner, but they'll also be going after various performance related prizes that will be given to teams for winning or drawing their games within the group stages, as well as winning games in the knockout rounds. And of course, there's a prize for the winners of the tournament. In addition to the, this record-breaking prize fund, several national teams have also pledged to increase the bonuses that they pay out to players based on the performance in the tournament. And many of them have also stated that they will give these players bonuses that will equal that of their male national teams. So a lot of the teams are trying to level the playing field between their men and men and women. bonuses that will the increase in the bonuses, the increase in the prize fund just showed how serious these teams are taking their, their women's team and it just shows the growth that is taking place in women's football currently. For another first, we have VAR and goal line technology being used in this year's tournament and this is a welcome change. Even though VAR is usually controversial, I welcome the change because I think it's it's the level in the playing field where we're using the same technology that is used in the men's game, in the women's game. So again, it's a welcome change. The current tournament title holders, we have Netherlands who won the tournament in 2017. The team that has won the most titles would have been Germany with 8 out of 12 wins. So Germany is, uh, is a team to watch going into this, this tournament. Another competition favourites would be England. England has fallen short a number of times and their recent form has been remarkable and everyone is looking at this English team and asking, can they finally win their first major international tournament? So a lot of a lot of teams, a lot of players to watch. We look at those players when we look at the team previews, but let's look at the teams that make up this Women's Euro tournament. Once again, we have 16 teams and four groupings. Group A has the host England as well as Austria. Norway and competition debutants Northern Ireland. In Group B, we have Germany, Denmark, Spain and Finland. Group C, there's Netherlands, Sweden, Switzerland and Portugal. Portugal replaces 
Russia based on the sanctions that is that has been placed on Russia and their players. And in Group D, we have France, Italy, Belgium, and Iceland. That's it for this introduction to the Women's Euro Tournament. We'll be going through each group and looking at the team's history, their key players, their rising stars, their form, and the best fantasy football options for the Women's Euro Tournament. I'll be playing Women's Euro Fantasy, which is available on the She Plays Fantasy website. I'll link it down below. And if I make a league, I'll also link that down below as well. You can also check on everyone's game Twitter to find out more. UEFA have also released a predictor game where you can predict the individual scores for individual matches as well as the overall table, who will get knocked out when, etc. So again, content is coming. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can always know when videos are released. And thank you for supporting this channel.